Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube Boxing Family? It is IK right here. I'm back at it with another good video uh, um, for you guys today. Um, yeah, so um, let's get right into it. Uh, we have a pretty good fight matchup uh, between uh, these two up and coming guys uh, by the name of Omar Conde Trinidad versus Adan Ochoa. Um, for this matchup, this is a very interesting fight. Um, as far as how this fight plays out, I think it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what happens. Um, this is not a bad fight, um, but as far as where we're seeing the, the progression between these two fighters, um, there is a lot of, you know, bad blood uh, between these two guys. And I figured I'd uh, talk about it in this video. So, yeah, let's talk about Mr. Omar Trinidad. Um, he is a 27 year old featherweight fighter, fights out of Los Angeles, California. He's 5 foot 9 with a 70 inch arm reach, and he is a um, orthodox fighter. He's been fighting for three years, but he has a pretty stacked, well, I wouldn't say like that the resume is hyper stacked yet, but it's definitely getting there. Um, I would definitely say he, you know, he's wanting to fight, you know, all the best competition that's put in front of him. And I would say the same thing for Adan Ochoa. He's only lost to two fighters that have, uh, you know, pretty good, you know, up and coming, you know, records. Um, but I mean, those two fighters that Adan Ochoa has lost to are good fighters. Um, he lost to Adam Lopez who obviously lost to Abraham, you know, Supernova, you know, recently, uh, January 14th. So, uh, that was a pretty good fight. Um, as far as that goes, um, you know, that was a really good fight that he had with, um, Adam Lopez. Um, he actually ended up rematching him in the past, which ended up becoming a no, to, a, a no contest because I believe that was like a major headbutt um, at the start of round two. Um, I remember that fight. That was actually on the top rank uh, November 20th card. Uh, I believe that happened on the Crawford Crawford Porter, you know, card. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, um, Omar. Um, oh man, like I'm sorry. Um, Adan Ochoa, you know, he's um, he's lost to some pretty good competition. Um, you know, Adam Lopez obviously beat him. That was early in his career. That was like a four rounder in his uh, third fight. He was uh, he was um, two and zero um, at the time, facing Adam, who was uh, five and zero, uh, and Adam beat him. And uh, he lost to um, Edward Vasquez. If you guys don't know who who Edward Vasquez is, um, he's a very sturdy, um, you know, fighter in his division. Um, he's that uh, Mexican American looking fighter that that had a very controversial split decision loss to Raymond Savage Ford, who currently holds the WBA um, Continental Americas featherweight title. So, um, yeah, Raymond Ford, he's definitely on the rise because he's 23 years old, he's 13-0, and 0, and uh, he wants to be, in, uh, be inside of the mix for the world title stage um, at the, uh, you know, upper echelon, and... Raymond Ford, he's doing extremely well right now. Um, he's really in a very good position right now, so I don't know what he's planning on doing, but it's going to be interesting to see what he's going to be doing for his uh, career. Because if Raymond Ford, if he can get a hold of any of the top 10 guys, or I probably even say like top 25, like I mean, you know, you could try to fight like a guy like Michael Conlon, or if you want to go after Arnold. You know Arnold, you know Kagai, or maybe you know fight a guy like Kiko Martinez. You know that's a, you know that's a very sturdy test. Um, he could really go after um, guys like uh, well, I mean Isaac Dobbit. He's going up against you know Robesi Ramirez for the for the WBO um, interim title, which you know I would assume the winner of that title will most likely be elevated to the champion. So. I mean, there's like a lot of competition for Raymond Ford, but um, for Edward Vasquez losing a controversial decision to Raymond Ford, that does speak volumes because um, Adan Ochoa, he was, I want to say the only guy able or uh, the only person that was able to drop him in round two of that fight that he had with him. And um, like, honestly, that's, uh, 
uh, that's a really good, you know, thing to do, you know? And I think, um, you know, it's, it's like, it's good that, you know, Adana Choa, he's not afraid to fight anybody. Um, he actually shows it with his heart and, and, uh, determination. But, um, I think with the character of Omar Trinidad style, I think this is a really, really bad style matchup just simply because, um, Omar, he's a way bigger guy than him. Um, I think Omar shows a lot more determination late game compared to Adon Ochoa. Um, Ochoa, he does get hit a good amount um, in a fight, so I don't think it's going to take much for Omar to really knock him out. But um, never like I'm never to say that anybody could be out of like a fight just simply based off of you know whoever has like, the power advantage, but. You know, it's boxing. Anything could happen. But I think at this stage of their careers, Adana Choa, he's 12-2. and two. Um, He hasn't lost for quite a... Well, I mean, he hasn't lost since his victory over Angel Luna. Well, that was back in, you know, June of 2021. So, I mean, look, the only downside of this is that he's been really inactive. Um, predating to, uh, I say, November of 2021. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're basically heading into almost like a year and a half, if not almost close to two years. But, I mean, things happen for certain fighters, and I understand that, you know, not everybody can keep up with boxing because, you know, you have, you know, certain issues outside of your life that holds you back. So, I mean, you know, I'm never going to doubt like a man's, you know, you know, reasoning for why he couldn't do what he couldn't do, but... I think with like Adana Choa, like, you know, like a very active focus fighter of him, he's a lot more dangerous and a lot more competitive for what he does in boxing. Um, I will say the strengths and weaknesses between these two fighters is simply due to speed. Um, I think Adan, he's more faster, but Omar, he's a lot more uh, accurate and he's a lot more precise to actually hurt you late game. Um, I think that's what's going to make this fight very interesting um i'm not too sure how many rounds this is going to be but i'm hoping that this is like a 10 rounder because it's really due for a 10 rounder um i don't think either man has ever fought 10 rounds in their career yet um yeah like i'm looking at it, the highest that that adon was supposed to fight was an eight rounder to adam to adam lopez but unfortunately he had that no contest um, up against him so I assume that was probably due to some massive headbutt or something within like, the fight that caused that fight to be canceled or to be you know stopped um, early but um yeah I mean you know that's really you know telling that you know you know um, either guy hasn't really been there to the deep waters yet but I mean either way like Omar he hits hard enough to not make a fight go long distance but I think um how this is going to play out is, uh, in my mind, I think Omar is going to stop him. Or Adana Cho is going to make Omar tired. And this is going to be a game of chess of who's going to break either fighter's soul, uh, you know, mentally and physically. Um, I think Omar, he carries a lot more uh, destructive uh, patterns and showing more combinations where he actually has a really good uh ring iq to to break to break a fighter's will down rather than just trying to find the you know let the right shot and um you know uh disassemble a fighter's you know ability to be good but i think either way um with uh this matchup this is more going to be like a actual like boxer puncher versus a pure boxer and knowing how i've seen both of these guys fight i think omar he's gonna stop adan to the body because adan he could take a punch that's one thing i've seen out of him even out of his two losses he's hasn't he hasn't really been hyper buzzed with like a huge shot in his career but knowing that he's 24 years old coming into uh being 25 come uh next month um, yeah, this is definitely a must-win fight for Adana Choa, or else, you know, he's gonna have to, like, I'm never gonna say losing is really bad, like, I don't really believe in that, it's just more like, you know, you, you know, if you lose coming off of, like, a long layoff, it's really not your fault, it's more like, you know, you just didn't be, like, you know, um, you weren't supposed to be prepared 
coming into any situation at all and i mean you know certain things happen but either way like i mean for adon's case he was supposed to fight jalen walker and i guess what happened was that that fight probably fell through so he wasn't able to stay active that following 2022 because i'm seeing right here on tapology.com that that fight was supposed to be set up for may 12th and uh for some reason that never happened and on that card that's where uh chelsea anderson she she fought on the card she beat jessica juarez and then you had all the other guys you know you had some pretty decent you know competition but i mean either way like you still had you know a pretty decent card because you know caleb walsh you know he's obviously the, the bigger you know draw well i wouldn't even say that like he's like one of the main fighters that have been you know um promoted you know developmentally over in the west coast but um either way uh i mean it's uh like it's good that you know um adan you know he's trying to you know get back in there and hopefully uh this fight is a very competitive fight um i think how this is really going to play out is that i think omar he's going to stop him simply due to the fact that you know he's been more fresher he was very active in 2022 he fought like one two three four times out of 2022 and he fought some pretty decent decent opposition um he uh had like six rounders so now you know um, with his most recent fight against Ho Jose Luis, you know, Ramirez, uh, that was a second round KO victory, uh, that was supposed to be eight rounds, but unfortunately, uh, things didn't really, you know, go the way it should have, and, uh, he was able to get the guy out of there, so, I think this is a really good fight for Omar, I think Omar, he's gonna shine really good in this fight, and he's gonna have a lot more to gain out of this fight, because, uh, I do be hearing that uh, these guys don't like each other, and I'm not too sure of how Omar's point of view is, but I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, if I could ever get the opportunity to speak with him, um, yeah, I'd like to see what his uh, point of view is against um, Adana Choa, because I think either guy is going to crack each other, but the difference is, is that Omar he's been more he's been more sharper throughout his career to stay active and you know um he's been doing a really good job by keeping himself active where he's not limiting himself to you know whatever promotional stable that's out there that can limit him to go anywhere he wants because like i mean i think i think like the biggest problem with like a lot of fighters today is that they're not taking control of their com like of their of their career fully so they're having to be stuck with certain promotional deals that you know that they were promised to be having like four or five fights a year but then you know once you start getting like all of the big money fights or leading up to it it's like you know you get limited to be fighting like you know less than at least like you know two or three times like a year which is most likely two two times a year because it's like once you get up to like the high level in boxing it's like you know people people don't want to have those fighters be fighting like you know consistently which i mean that's not really true because you know canelo alvarez you know he he was able to fight like two three times a year but he he was able to set his standard of coming back to let the ring at least like every four to six months so I mean, you know, if you're able to control your career and have more fights, my philosophy is that the more the merrier, you know, get get more fights in um, and just stay active. You know, it's kind of similar with, um, you know, with MMA and wrestling, you know, it, you know, um, if you're able to get more mat time or more, you know, ring experience to feel comfortable in there, you know, that's uh, that's going to be the only way for you to get better. So. I think uh, this is a very good skill builder fight. This is going to be one of those uh, gauntlet gauntlet level matchups where we don't know what's going to happen, but I think Omar, he's going to have the uh, um, advantages over Adan simply because of height, the reach, and definitely the size. Um, Omar, he's a really big dude just by looking at him, and he looks like he could definitely be a 140 pounder. Or at, or, at, or at least to the maximum, a 135 pounder. 
um i don't know how much you know he's really having to cut down but it uh, but it definitely looks like you know if you really wanted to to max out a fighter um you could definitely put omar at his highest cap to be a welterweight or at least a 140 pounder and i'd say for adana choa um i'd probably say maybe definitely 135 he he definitely has a good body type for it but you know like i said it, it like in boxing if you have at the height and reach advantage and you're able to still dominate people with your boxing uh, boxing um skills and abilities you know regardless of like your physical attributes like that speaks a lot of volumes of how much you can grow and weight because you know that the bigger and, and more stronger you are at the higher weight classes uh um that converts very well into your future so you know you would take advantage of fighting at bigger weight classes if you had the ability to convert to the weight class and i think even comparable to devin haney's case like you know we obviously know that devin haney he's been fighting at 135 for quite a long time but he didn't need to fight at 135 like devin haney could have easily fought at like 147 or at least like i would say at least 140 or 147 he didn't like he didn't really need to start at like 130 and then go up to 35 and then just move forward with just staying at that weight class similar to like what errol spence is doing by just trying to like sacrifice more of your body leaf like a bodily fluids to you know put yourself at risk more but uh that's like a different you know situation and uh you know like i'll probably talk about that you know in a different video but as far as this matchup goes uh this is a really good fight i think omar is really going to stop him but i don't think it's going to be easy simply because adana choa he does have faster hands but as far as with the footwork and as far as with the ring iq and as far as cutting off with the ring or or creating space to get away from punches in the ring i think um you know adana Choa, he's not going to keep up with that late game he's going to be able to like use his jab try to pop omar you know with like a good shot or two but i don't i don't think that's going to be enough to beat a guy like omar i think omar he's really going to find his opportunity and then the minute he cracks him um it might be game over uh i'm only saying this simply because omar he knows how to cut um he knows how to cut uh, uh the uh, ring off you know efficiently and he doesn't use any means of trying to look for like a wild shot he's always calculated in his approach of how he fights um he has like a little shade of arrow spence but i think if anything he you know he has like that raul marquez type of fighting style like i think like i think a lot of those like like i'm not saying every fighter out of the west coast in california that fights at the mexican school of fighting but uh the ones that mastered the art of mexican school and then convert it to american school of boxing where you could still box and move but you could also walk you know an opponent down with educated defensive pressure i think that's a really really good style because you know uh comparable to sean porter in a way you have a very good opportunity to knock somebody out but you don't need to knock them out all you need to do is just beat them up you know late game that's really how you win you know those rounds to be to be more successful in the later rounds because i think the biggest issue with like a lot of boxers is that they're like you know they're always trying to look for that knockout early game but they don't understand that you know this is a game of endurance so if you're not practicing your body to be ready for the late game endurance then that's just going to give you the uh weaker edge of being defeated you know by like a bigger shot from like a heavy fisted puncher so um i think either way like with omar's ability to to convert his power late game and be more destructive with a heavier gas tank i think that's what makes him you know really good like obviously you know that the furthest he's ever gone in a distance fight was uh, six rounds so i mean his uh he's only had like two decisions his entire career that 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 has made him go four rounds and six rounds so i think heading into you know however many rounds this is gonna be if this is like an eight or ten rounder 
to which I'm hoping this is a 10 rounder because I'm hoping like you know like if Omar if he's willing to move up faster into like the rankings by getting more rounds in so therefore he could be uh more comfortable taking on like a bigger fight against uh you know more um dangerous opposition in which I'll talk about that in um in my next you know final topic before I close out this video but um yeah you know just get more rounds in because I think Omar um, he's benefiting off of fighting fighters, you know, regardless if they're undefeated or not, just to, you know, keep taking on the best challenges that are put in front of him. Um, but I think this is a really good, good, good victory to have on your resume because um, obviously um, I don't play triangle theory because it's because triangle theory is um, illogically inconsistent for boxing, but when we look at skill level i think like when you use up the skill level theory to measure the pyramid of who's better than who um that will give you a little bit of a crest of information to show like okay if i beat this guy this is where i believe this fighter will be if he ever meets with this fighter it's not to say that he can beat them or you know it's an automatic with you know you know loss or win against the fighter that they could possibly be matched up with in the in the future but um i think uh, the thing is is that um when you look at the level of competition that's in your division that's doing good um you start to understand that there's certain uh levels in boxing that you have to like achieve for you to graduate to the to the area of success of where you need to be to be considered you know you know uh the absolute best um you fighting the weaker competition does not make you the best you fighting the toughest and most destructive competition is what's going to put you along with the absolute best and my concluding point is is that with omar and adan you know regardless of who wins this fight this is going to show the upper echelon breed of who's going to be there and who's going to want to continue their career to be successful because that's going to be like the bigger takeaway from it because um i think uh you know based off of what the skill set between these two young guns i think omar he's going to show a lot more separation in his skills by benefiting uh the late game strategy against um adana choa but if Adon Ochoa, if he's able to outbox Omar and, and utilize his, his speed and utilize his, um, you know, his um, ring IQ, if he's able to, to, de to, to uh, develop it uh, within like, the fight itself, then I think that's what, you know, that's what, make, like, that's what will make this fight very interesting. Because um, I don't think this is going to be an easy fight for either man. This is definitely a 50-50 fight until something bad happens with uh, changing like, the fight whether some 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 cut gets gets caught or some crazy high level bruise gets um you know set up but i don't think omar is going to let that fight you know go to that level um he's really good at you know giving a lot of pressure to his opposition to make sure he doesn't get hit a lot but um he has really good you know intense pressure has amazing um you know how should I say defensive reads to know you know when an opponent's going to lash out on them and he just knows how to just really just really make a tempo set in a fight and um i think i think that's where you know the arrow spent school of fighting comes in because not a lot of fighters can master fighting inside of the pocket and being comfortable doing it because like i mean even for you know for like myself when i did any form of light sparring I always make sure that I come in, like get in and, and get out. I don't just sit inside of the pocket. I move, but I also jab when I move. And then I also see a, a good opportunity to break my opponent's will rather than just trying to force it. And I get myself caught with something huge. So, I mean, that's like another big thing in boxing. You know, you have to really master the sweet science. And if you can't, you know make those like adjustments to do good then you know that's where you're gonna get burned out you know someone's just going to you know burn you out and you know um you're going to get outclassed so 
I mean, you know, it's either sink or swim. So I think either way, I think either guy will be fine. You know, regardless of who wins or loses, obviously people try to play this, oh, undefeated record matters, but look at, you know, who the person lost to. And then that means that they're going to lose, you know, with the fight. No, like, you know, uh, the resume doesn't speak for itself to say, oh, well, they lost their last fight. So that means that they're most likely to lose to this fighter because this fighter has been, you know, you know, destroying everybody, blah, blah, blah. No, you know, that's where triangle theory, you know, um, how should I say triangle theory, uh, you know, praisers or whiners, you know, will try to come into the conversation and say, well, triangle theory does work because X, Y, and Z, because, you know, that has to work and it's not, you know, consistent with any form of philosophical, you know, discussion. So either way, uh, this is going to be a really good fight. Uh, I believe this is dated for April 1st. So either way, congratulations to both guys taking this fight um early in their careers um i mean i wouldn't even say early because of don he has over like 13 or no he has over 14 fights now so <laughs> i mean you know he's not you know he's definitely not afraid to go to go up against the upper echelon of featherweights but uh this is definitely step one for either man to advance their careers and then hey you know hopefully you know this could be like a Marco Ber like a Marco Barrera versus Eric Morales type of fight so you know these are two str two strong hungry Mexican you know uh born fighters or or a Mexican descent fighters uh I think they're both from California yeah uh Omar's from Los Angeles and Adana Choa he's from Long Beach California he was born there but he's um out of Downey California uh in the west coast so yeah, uh, this is actually a really, really good fight. So hopefully um, Adan, he's training extremely hard and, you know, he's going to give Omar, a, you know, a, a very difficult fight. And then hopefully we get to see a much bigger opportunity for either guy or for or or for uh, both of them heading into the future. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. Be sure to let me know uh, uh, what your thoughts is. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out and salute to the mighty, mighty LDBC and TWT. And I am out. Peace, love, liberty, happiness. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.